to part one of our multi-part series entitled Knowing Your Cryptographic Module, Avoiding Common Pitfalls. The content in this tutorial is geared toward vendors who may be just starting out with the cryptographic validation and design process. The goal is not to provide in-depth information about FIPS 140-2, but rather to ensure that some of the seemingly basic requirements are fully understood. In this segment, we will dig a little deeper into the foundations of cryptographic modules and the initial building blocks required for compliance with FIPS 140-2, specifically how the mechanics of powering up a crypto module may not be understood the same way by everyone, and what controls and design qualities need to be in place before a crypto module has a chance at becoming a FIPS validated module. There are many requirements that dictate whether a potential crypto module can be a validated module, and there are also some exceptions. One example is that a crypto module requires at least one approved security function used in an approved mode of operation. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to make some initial assumptions that things like FIPS approved cryptography are necessary, and instead focus more on the design aspects. In this diagram, we can see that the module is permitted to have a factory state, whereby the module may not necessarily be FIPS compliant at that stage. The operator has the opportunity to install and configure the components that will result in a FIPS-approved crypto module. Once this step has been satisfied, the module is required to meet the power-up and initialization requirements. We can basically divide would-be crypto modules into two categories from the very beginning. The first example is a module which does not meet the initialization requirements of IG 9.5 and may not perform the required power-up self-tests after instantiation. This example is referred to as not a validated crypto module because it doesn't follow the requirements of FIPS 140-2 from the get-go. Since it doesn't meet the requirements of a valid FIPS crypto module, we must discount it and move on to a model that can be made compliant. A common misunderstanding is that a non-module and a module in the non-approved mode of operation are the same thing, which is not the case. Non-module is simply a term used to describe a cryptographic product that is non-FIPS compliant out of the gate. You will notice on the right-hand side of the diagram that once we have a module which can be considered a validated cryptographic module, that it must now execute all power-up self-tests. It is important to note that all crypto modules must perform and pass the power-up self-test stage prior to becoming operational and performing any cryptographic operations. The diagram points out the only exception where the module was already in an approved mode of operation and is being switched to another approved mode of operation. In this instance, the power-up self-tests were executed previously and passed, so there's no reason to execute them again. This would not be the case, however, if the module were being powered up from scratch or if it was previously in a non-approved mode of operation. As shown at the bottom of the diagram, a validated crypto module may operate in three different ways. The first option is that the module is designed to operate in a mixed mode of operation. This means that the module services, both FIPS approved and non-FIPS approved, are available to the operator. In this scenario, there is generally no mechanism implemented in the module which is capable of enforcing the mode. The operator must pay particular attention to the security policy in order to determine what services will cause the module to operate in an approved mode and which will cause the module to operate in a non-approved mode. We generally refer to this mixed mode as one that is enforced by policy rather than by the module. On the other hand, a module which supports a distinct approved and non-approved mode is required to enforce and abide by the requirements of each mode as shown here. Let's recap. The module may have factory settings which are not initially FIPS compliant. The operator may implement the necessary configuration to make the module compliant. These steps shall be documented in the non-proprietary security policy. If the cryptographic module does not contain the configuration data to be compliant with FIPS 140-2 or doesn't automatically execute power-up self-tests, then is considered a non-module. Module services may be implemented in a FIPS approved mode, a non-FIPS approved mode, or a mixed mode, whereby all services are available and their use is dictated by policy. This concludes our explanation on the origins of a validated crypto module. Please remember to like and subscribe and click on the notification bell to be informed about upcoming tutorials in this series. Thanks for watching.